know about study abroad? Yes. And after that, chop, chop. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Liz Vasasek. I'm the study abroad coordinator here at Broward College. Um, before we get started, we need to give a huge thank you to Ms. Celia Roberts, who organized this for us, is recording it for us, for those who can't attend. So many, many thanks to her. She's amazing. All right, so let's start with what is study abroad? Does anybody want to take a stab at it? They're like, <laughs> no, I don't. Are you going to put the camera on me? Okay, so study abroad is essentially international study outside of the country in which you reside in, in which you earn academic credit towards your degree. So why would I want to study abroad is the second question a lot of people ask me when they blink and cross their eyes. Any ideas why somebody might want to study abroad? Because it's awesome? Because it's <laughs> awesome, yes. There are places yes. in the world that are better than Florida. <laughs> there are places in it. Depends on your perspective, but there are different places and more, could potentially be more interesting than Florida. Learn a language. To learn a language, absolutely. All right, so study abroad essentially allows you to earn academic credits. You get to gain intercultural communication skills, which is really, really important in this day and age. You get to explore different cultures and languages and ways of life. If you go to New Zealand and someone says, hey, grab the chili box, let's go to the beach. And you're like, I'm sorry, the what? <laughs> the chili box. And it would be said in a much better accent. Um, it's a cooler. It's a cooler. So you learn things like that and things like, oh, not everybody has dinner at 6 o'clock. Interesting. It's 9.30. I'm a little hungry. So you learn things like that. One of the really cool things that people forget about study abroad is that you also learn so much about your own culture. You get outside of your context and you get to take a peek looking in. So no matter what you learn there about other people, you always learn just as much about yourself. It also improves your personal and professional resume. Study abroad is something which goes on your resume for life. It's one of those things that employers take a peek and they're like, oh, you spent a month studying in Italy. That says a lot about you. You have initiative, you have interpersonal communication skills, you have a global perspective, so it goes on your resume. Not to mention your personal res resume, it's an awesome thing to do, as Ms. Celia said. And it also helps you develop your independence and see the world while you're at it. One of those perks that, you know, on your weekends when you're not in school and instead of going, you know, down to Brickell, you, I don't know, go play in a cloud rainforest, for example. Really phenomenal experience. So who is eligible to study abroad? All right, so student study abroad is open to students at least 18 years of age um, with a 2.5 GPA or higher. One of the common misperceptions or misbeliefs that people have about study abroad is that you have to be in a certain discipline. You don't have to be a language major, you don't have to be a history major. Study abroad is open to students from all academic programs. It's open to students of all nationalities, so a lot of times we have international students that don't really think about it. Yes, that includes you. If you're a Broward student, yes, you can study abroad. Um, it's open, yeah, to students who are interested in learning a foreign language. Yes, go to France, go to Canada to learn French. Go to Argentina, go to Spain to learn Spanish. It's really, really great when you're there on site, when you get to learn in the context of your life. Um, students who are interested in completing coursework abroad in many different disciplines in English. This is another common misperception that people have about study abroad, is that you have to speak a foreign language to do it. Absolutely not the case. The majority of our programs, the coursework is actually conducted in English. So you could, could go to Greece, for example, and do coursework in, you could do a science or a history or a writing class, and you would do all your coursework in English. If you want to teach Greek, awesome. And it is also available to students of all financial backgrounds. I can't stress this enough. Uh, a lot of people think that you have to be rich or have thousands or millions of dollars in a bank account. Absolutely not true. Um, and we'll talk more about the financial bit as we go on. All right, so what types of programs do we offer? We offer a lot, a lot of different programs. And I'm going to go into more depth with these. We have BC faculty-led programs. We have College Consortium for International Studies, or CCIS programs. And we have other BC-sponsored programs, which I'll touch on as well. So, BC faculty-led programs. The first type of programs we offer are basically faculty-led programs, which range anywhere. These are short-term programs. They're anywhere from seven days to a month long. And the destination and the coursework that's offered vary by the year. 
essentially this would be as if you go to your history class on the Broward campus and your professor says, okay guys, instead of reading about the Colosseum, pack your bags because we're going to go spend a week learning on site about the Colosseum. So you guys all grab your suitcases and you travel with your Broward classmates and your faculty leaders and you head abroad for the component. Um, so these are really fantastic. For example, we had students this past year. We had students do zoology in Peru over spring break. We had a service learning trip uh, for nurses to Ecuador. During the summer, we had students go to Italy for a month and they studied Italian language and geology. So next summer, we're looking at programs for business in China. We're looking at programs for travel Spanish in Costa Rica. Peru is doing zoology again. The nursing service learning pro program is running and potentially Others um, are in development as well, so keep an eye out for those. So your eligibility for these programs are, you have to have at least a 2.5 GPA and be at least 18 years of age. However, students who are in BC Academy, who are degree-seeking students, are also eligible to be considered for these programs, as well as community members who are at least 18. All right, so those are a really great option if you have a smaller budget, smaller timeline, you can't get as much time off from work, or you just kind of want to dip your toe in the pond to see what, what is this study abroad business all about. It's a really great opportunity. All right, so now I'm going to tell you about the College Consortium for International Studies. A lot of times when I say consortium, people like to kind of go, heard that word, don't really know what it means. So a consortium is basically a group of organizations or businesses that work together and have a common purpose. So what the College Consortium for International Studies is, is it's a bunch of colleges and universities in the United States who have overseas partners or international partners. We basically get together and we share our programs. This means that we can offer you study abroad in 28 different countries with I believe it's 80 different programs, so there's a lot of opportunities. So these are the CCIS programs are what students kind of think in terms of their traditional study abroad. Their semester length program or their longer term summer programs. So four to ten weeks during the summer. So the coursework varies by the program. It's a little different because it's not essentially Broward classes. It's not as though you go and you're going to be with Broward classmates. You're going to be with other possibly Americans. You'll be with international students from around the world depending on the program you choose. And I'll sit down with you and I'll work to help you choose a program that has coursework that's being offered that will come back as a Broward equivalent towards something you need towards your degree. So these are a little different in that you travel independently, but you have the support services, you have the orientation, you have all that on-site component as well, um, but it's a little different format. So the eligibility for these programs is that you need to have, again, at least a 2.5 GPA and be at least 18 years of age. Some of the programs may have, may require that you be a business major, for example, or that you have a 3L, but it varies on the program. And of course, depending on where and what you're interested in, we can take a peek through and find a program that works for you. All right, so these are all of the lovely countries where we offer CCIS programs. So yes, you can go to Argentina and study Spanish. You can go to Morocco and study political science and Arabic if you like. You can go to Spain and do international relations and history courses and intensive Spanish language. There are tons of different programs, tons of different countries. So any of region of the world, unless it's Antarctica, but um, we can kind of get you, we can get you landed on that continent. All right, so BC is very excited that we, our partners, we have four different partners, Spain, Germany, Peru, and India. So if you're interested in studying abroad in Spain, you can attend the International College of Seville. This is an awesome, awesome program. It has intensive Spanish language and then it has a variety of intercultural relations courses. If you have had, if you're a native Spanish speaker or if you have had two years of Spanish language, you can do your courses also. They have a partnership with the University of Seville. You can go there and take coursework as well. And I think they have 50 or 60 different course offerings. So you have the opportunity to live in beautiful, beautiful Seville, Spain. Um, you have the option to live with either a homestay or you can live in a supervised residence. And you'll be with students from all over America who are studying abroad. You have support services, they do cooking classes, you can do an internship, you can do volunteer. Um, there are lots of different opportunities with this program. We've had this partnership for, we're having our 35th anniversary, so it's been going on a long time. Our program in Germany, we actually have two different programs and it's in Heidelberg, Germany, which is in southwest Germany, which is absolutely gorgeous. 
Um, the first program we offer is at the International House Heidelberg, and this is an intensive German language program. So you can go for eight weeks or 16 weeks if you would like to and do intensive language. You have the opportunity to live in either self-serving apartments where you would have your your own room and then you have a kitchenette and then a kitchen that you can all share or you could live with the host family which we always encourage if you're looking to learn a language. Second program we have in Germany is at the University of the Incarnate Word European Study Center. This is a new partnership we formed which we're really excited about um, and it's also in Heidelberg right next door to our other school um, and so with this program you have the opportunity to do European Studies program. Uh, year-round, which includes philosophies, you could do a religion, you could do a histories, and it takes excursions all over Germany, um, and I believe a couple to France, so it's a really awesome program. Then we come to Peru, head down to South America. So Peru, we actually, were, we work with the Universidad San Ignacio de Loyola, or UCL is a little easier, um, less of a mouthful. So you can either study abroad in metropolitan Lima, which is the capital of Peru, or you can go to Cusco. Um, which is a very, very historic city, if any of you have heard of Machu Picchu. Anybody? Yeah, absolutely. That is located in Peru. So if you decide to study abroad in Lima, really, really cool. It has a full course catalog of English um, coursework. And also, you can take coursework in Spanish at the university. Cusco is a more specialized program in which you can do things like the biodiversity of Peru. You can do Andean nutrition. You can do Spanish language courses and you'll be at their, their international center there. Then, there's also our program in India, which offers the, um, for four-year students, uh, for the semester program, it's oriented towards four-year students in business information systems, um, and you get the opportunity to do an internship um, while you're there. And then the summer program is business and culture, and you also have the opportunity to design a field research project. So those are a couple of partnerships that we have, which are really awesome, which our students continue to go in. All right, other programs. So how many of you actually knew that we have Broward campuses around the world? A couple of hands, awesome. Way to go, guys. Um, so we have Broward campuses around the world. So we have students in Vietnam who are going to school. We have students in Peru who are going to school just like you and getting Broward degrees in their home countries. So at the BC International Center in Vietnam, they're actually um, they offer a study abroad program for six weeks in two different sessions during the summer. So this is really cool is that it's Broward classes essentially. So you go over there, you study, and they also have an opportunity for a scholarship, which I'll mention later on. Then there's also the Cambridge Summer Program through the University of South Florida in which they do summer institutes in a variety of disciplines, uh, which are three weeks in length. All right, so here is the next question, sometimes the first. How am I going to pay for it? All right, financial aid. So, a lot of students use financial aid towards study abroad. Students who are assuming, yeah, it's gonna pay for my full semester, my financial aid, right? Probably not the case, but we'll get to that. Um, so federal and state financial aid can be, studied, can be applied towards study abroad programs. So you'll need to complete your FAFSA and you'll talk to the experts in the BC Financial Aid Office who can tell you about how your aid will apply to your study abroad program. So first step would be to meet me and then you can meet with them and they can give you more details on your case in particular. Scholarships. All right. I'm going to give you guys the cold hard truth about scholarships. Okay. First, first is that they're absolutely free money. It's free money. Free money. You don't have to pay scholarships back. Second of all, yes, you have to do an application to apply for scholarships. But let's say that, I don't know, you're applying for a $10,000 scholarship. Okay, you spend maybe five hours working on it, and you get it. How much, anybody want to do the math? How much did you get paid an hour to do that scholarship application? $2,000 an hour. Not bad. I mean, a little less than I make in my day job, but I don't know about you guys. Um, the third thing, the common mistake students make is they say, I'm not going to get it. No, not going to happen to me. Here's the reality. Somebody's going to get it. Somebody's going to take that free money and have an amazing experience. Why not you? All right, so the first scholarship I'm going to talk about, which we actually have a veteran scholar here, is the William E. Green Scholarship for Semester Study Abroad. 
This is a full scholarship for a degree-seeking Broward student to study at one of the BC International Centers in Spain, Peru, or Ecuador for a semester. When I say full scholarship, I mean a full scholarship, as in, we pay for your tuition, we pay for your health insurance, we pay for your housing, we pay for your meals, your airfare. So the expenses you would essentially be responsible for are your passport, which many of you already have, and then whatever money you want to have for your evening and weekend expenses. It's a phenomenal opportunity. So in order to be eligible, you need to have at least a 3.0 GPA. You need to have completed ENC 1101 at the time of application and then have 12 credit hours, either Broward credits or transfer in credits at the 1,000 or 2,000 level. So when you look at your courses and it says ENC 1101 or it says Dev Ed Math 0028, you're going to want to look for the ones that start with the one or two. So this is an amazing opportunity. Currently we have two scholars abroad. We have Sophie who is in Seville, Spain, enjoying her semester. And we have Tiffany who is in Lima, Peru, um, having a, an absolutely phenomenal time. So the deadline for the spring 2015 term is November 7th at 4 o'clock. That means you have some seven, eight weeks to do your scholarship application. So it requires, you'll do an application, guidelines, a couple of essays, and get some letters of recommendation. So I encourage you, I encourage you to apply for this scholarship. It's fantastic because who doesn't want somebody else to pay for you to study abroad? All right, second scholarship that we have, um, sponsored by BC, is a summer scholarship to study abroad. This is a partial scholarship which we award during the summer for students who are going on faculty-led programs. So you can request up to one-third of the cost of the program. Um, in order to be eligible, you need to have a 2.5 GPA. Again, you'll do the application, you'll do an essay, and get letters of recommendation. The deadline for the submission is in mid-March, so again, you have time on that. Um, last summer we gave out, I believe it was $16,000, so something to think about. We got money to spend. Um, Alright, so there is also, for those of you who are in the honors program or intend to be in the honors program, there is a partial scholarship given by the honors. So talk to Dr. Sheila Jones and she can give you more information about that. It's also on their website and my website as well. All right, the Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship. This is an awesome scholarship with, which not a lot of students know about. This is for undergraduate US citizen scholars um, who are receiving a Pell Grant. Basically what this is is that they are willing to give you up to $5,000 for a semester study abroad program or $2,500 for a summer program. So something to think about is that you can, for example, I had a student this fall go to Gilman. Um, so she received $4,000 for her Gilman. She had $3,500 of financial aid and that on top of each other was $7,500. So she basically paid. Um, I think it was $49 for the remaining tuition for her program. So, not a bad deal, not a bad deal. So I always encourage students. With the BC sponsored scholarships, you're on your own in terms of um, your applications. Talk to your English press professors, talk to your faculty, have somebody proofread it for you. But with scholarships that are outside of Broward that are sponsored by other entities, I work with you on those essays. I look over them, I provide critique, because I think there is nothing more awesome than getting you guys free money to study abroad. It's kind of fantastic. So, there are lots of other scholarships available. Um, the CCIS Study Abroad Scholarship, there's a lot of money for students who are interested in going to Asia, there's the David L. Boren Scholarship um, for students who are interested in studying abroad in non-traditional destination. So there's money out there. It really just takes you actually doing the application and submitting it, which may seem like the hardest part, but it's really not. All right, so what can I do to learn more? You can visit our website. I'm actually gonna show that to you in just one moment. You can like us on the Broward College International Education page. I post updates and tidbits and fun travel quotes and things like that that might, interest it, that might interest you. You can sign up for the Green International Update. This is a student listserv, welcome to faculty as well. But I send out, once or twice a month, I send out information on available international opportunities, such as programs and scholarships and highlight events such as this. 
you can make an appointment to meet with me. Come down, I'm at the WHC campus in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Make an appointment to come talk to me. As I always tell students, worst case scenario, you spend you know 15 minutes more listening to the sound of my voice. Best case scenario, we get it sorted for you and you go spend an amazing semester or summer or spring break abroad. You can also talk to other students about their experiences. Believe me, once you've studied abroad, you won't shut up about it. I'm in my 30s and I'm still clearly talking about study abroad. So talk to other students if you are unsure about it, you want more information. I've never had a student come back to me and said, say, man, that was really a bummer, kind of a waste of my time, sorry about that. They always come in and say, okay, where can I go next? How do I get free money? I've got to go, I've got to go. Um, so definitely talk to other students about their experiences. Or you can stick around to chat for a few minutes because I'll be on site here to talk about things. All right, so final thoughts. Study abroad will transform and challenge you. It's absolutely true. The person you go before you study abroad and the person you come back, it's like you 2.0. You absolutely change, you grow, you evolve in ways that you may not necessarily be able to do by staying inside your own context. So it's a challenging experience, but it's absolutely awesome. And any study abroad person that you will talk to, their life is kind of split into two parts. It's like pre-study abroad and then post-study abroad because it will transform your perspective, your life, and potentially your academic, personal, and professional goals. All right, stop saying I can't and start saying how can I. I made this mistake. For the first two years of college when that perky study abroad person would come in at my nine o'clock class and talk about study abroad. I would roll my eyes and think, yes, yeah, mm -hmm, I work almost full time and I have a lease and I have all these things going on. This is not for me. It's for the rich kids. Please be quiet. Um, and then I kind of started thinking about, well, okay, well, how could I do it? You know, if I, if I wanted to, if, if I had this crazy idea. So stop, if you made a list of all the reasons you can't go and then wrote a list of all of the reasons that you can to make that happen, it will change, it will change for you and you will figure out how to get there. And I will help you figure out how to get there. It's totally and absolutely worth it. As I mentioned before, nobody comes back and regrets it. Nobody comes back and regrets it. So no matter how much paperwork or essay writing or whatever you have to go through, the minute you get off that plane or get on that plane and you land there, your life is transformed and every, all of the work up to that point you have already forgotten because you're in an absolutely amazing experience. All right, so do I have any questions or comments or anything or silence? Oh, we got one. Uh, if I'm in an engineering program uh, and I need like math credits and this kind of stuff, can I still go and get credits for that? Yes, we can work together and look at different classes you need. Um, so, pro so programs may be a little bit more challenging to find courses. You may be limited to certain countries, but yes, we can definitely take a peek. Anything for accounting? I mean, yes, there are definitely accounting classes. For that, a summer scholarship that'll pay a third of the program cost. Yes. When's the deadline for that? The deadline in it for it will be in mid-March or the start to March. Thanks. So. And that will be, and all of these scholarships are on our website, so I'm actually going to take you there. We'll do questions, and then don't let me forget to show you guys the website. Okay. So international students, I'm already an international student here. Can I still go ahead and... Absolutely, absolutely, yes. International students, that's one of the common, like, oh, well, I'm currently studying abroad in the United States. Could I study abroad somewhere else? Yeah, absolutely. We had an international student from Haiti who this summer went to study abroad in Italy. So yes, it's absolutely doable, and we'll work with you to talk to the DSO and get that sorted out for you. Uh, how much uh, prices per class? Is it still the same uh, price you would pay as if you would take classes here? It depends. It depends on the program that you're doing. So for example, the CCIS semester programs, your tuition is calculated in the cost of the program fee. Um, for a faculty-led program, you'll pay the program fee and then whatever your tuition is based on the rate of tuition. Initial, you still pay out of state? Can you say that again? Do you still pay out of state? As if you're out of state, yeah. Whatever you pay as a resident or a non resident is what you'll pay for the faculty. In German, so if I study abroad in Germany, I still <laughs> pay out of state. <laughs> no, it doesn't work for you. That might not be very exciting. But maybe, maybe. Yeah. All right, other questions? Okay, so let's take a peek at the website. 
All right, so we are actually very easy to find. All right, so if you go to student resources, you can connect to us there, study abroad. Or if you go to academics and programs, you can catch us at international education. All right, so here is our study abroad web page. So here you'll find information about our semester programs. We also have our faculty-led study abroad programs. You can find information on the scholarships as well as the application. We got a whole bunch of study abroad resources for us, so if you, resources for you. So if you need to do things like, hey, I need to find my passport, or I need to get a passport. If you're going, here's a traveler's checklist that they have for you. Um, you can link to our Facebook page here. There's information on abroad with disabilities. That's one thing a lot of students sometimes don't think about is, well, I have a disability and I can't go abroad. But yeah, there are support services available for you, so don't discount yourself. Um, because everybody has their own unique challenges and we're willing to work with you and happy to work with you to figure out what's best for you. And then travel guides, which are always fun if, you know, you want to take a peek at your next destination. Um, so the application process really depends on the program that you're interested in applying for. Um, so if you're doing a faculty-led program, a lot of your correspondence will be with the faculty leader for that program, and they'll provide you, and they can show you links and things for where to find the applications, which are directly on the website. If you're looking at doing a CCIS program, we'll work together because that's a different application process. All right, so there's our website, lots of good stuff. Like us on Facebook, we post fun stuff. Have a conversation with me on Facebook, it's all good. Um, and then you can make an appointment to see me. All right. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be around if you'd like to chit-chat for a few minutes about your individual circumstances. I would be happy to.